previously on Agent Cosmos. Where are we going? A place where you'll spend your entire life. Hello there, you just have to keep an eye for anything suspicious. Time for the containment. The therapist walks into the room and asks a certain someone to explain all the details. It happened a month ago. It was a typical day and Chris was struggling to keep up with the class. He stumbled across a note under his desk saying, we found another location to explore. Chris raised his eyes and saw his friends. He nodded and answered, okay. The whole group met on the outskirts of the school. Oh geez, we've been doing this for a year now. Still, we haven't been able to capture any suspicious activity, Chris said annoyingly. Don't worry guys, tonight will be a different story. We'll regroup by the entrance to the mountain at 8 o'clock. So you had no idea where you were going, therapist asks. No, but I was very excited to venture into that new place. I was too much into these urban explorations and I thought it would be a cool experience to capture. Kids these days. The entire group assembled at the entrance to the mountain. They began to walk through the deep forest and finally encountered a confined area guarded by fences. What do we do now? This place is off limits. We can't climb these fences. Don't worry, I got it covered. Josh responded by taking a wire cutter out of his backpack. Psst, you might be cutting the fence for the last time. Back off, Matt. As they snuck inside the fence, they noticed a large sign that read, Restricted Bio Site 33. They took out their camera and began filming, hoping to capture any unusual activity. They also noticed a massive structure covered in vines and strange flowers. While walking forward, Josh heard some crackling noises. He looked down and saw a couple of bones underneath his feet. Hey guys, come check this out, he called out his friends. Jesus, guys, I think we should go home. Don't be afraid, they might be the fake bones to keep explorers away. Josh tried to encourage everyone. He took the bone in his hand and tossed it as far as he could. Psst, Josh, this might be your final throw. Any death wish, Matt? Josh yelled, controlling his anger. They discovered containers, paperwork, and experimental equipment all over the abandoned facility while exploring it. As they passed through a narrow corridor with many rooms, Josh realized that Ashley was missing. Someone patted him on the shoulder. It was Ashley he assumed. However, he noticed Ashley emerging from one of the rooms. Before he could turn, he got dragged into the dark corridor by the vines. As he vanished into the darkness, his pals yelled and sought to grab him. However, the hallway floor gave way. They fell onto the floor underneath and became unconscious. I understand if you don't believe me, the person says after a brief delay. Keep going. Josh realized he had cutters with him as he was being dragged by the tendrils. He tried to cut the vines, but the tendrils were far stronger than he expected. He noticed a lovely flower sprouting from the vines and approaching his nose. It began to disperse pollen. After inhaling the pollen, he stopped struggling and became paralyzed. He noticed a massive plant with a gaping mouth. His skin began to burn as some of the saliva from its mouth spilled onto his hand. He wanted to scream and cry out for help, but he couldn't. I suppose this is the end. I wish I had the opportunity to tell Ashley how much I love her. He muttered his final words as the plant devoured him. The remaining three pals awoke in the middle of the night and began searching for Josh. They arrived across a room in which Josh had been dragged and discovered a skeleton on the wall. Ashley burst into tears as she spotted the wire cutters in that skeleton's hand. It's Josh, we need to get the hell out of here, Matt said trembling in fear. As he sought to go out the door, large needles punctured Matt's torso and he instantly fell down. Ashley screamed and began fleeing the other way, but Chris intervened. Calm down, Ashley, or you'll be next. We need to think about this properly. Chris tried to comfort Ashley. They saw vines leading to the upper floor and attempted to climb them. As they began climbing, the floor underneath them collapsed, revealing the Venus flytrap's massive mouth. Ashley, I hate to be the don't look down kind of guy, but seriously, don't look down. That's not helping, Chris. 
As she stated these words, Ashley spotted the same flower with poisonous pollen. She became paralyzed after inhaling the deadly pollen and fell into the fly trap's jaws. She tried to fight it at first, but the acid in its mouth burned her skin. She looked at Chris, tears welling up in her eyes, as the jaws of the fly trap closed. I wish I had the opportunity to tell Chris how much I love him. She muttered her final words. It must be difficult to watch all of your friends perish in front of your eyes. You have no idea, Chris says while holding his tears. Chris is asked by the therapist if he wants to forget all of his memories, to which he nods his head and responds, I wish I could, but these memories will stick with me for the rest of my days. Therapist takes out a strange gun from his bag and points toward Chris. You may leave now. Hello and welcome back to yet another discussion. Today, we'll discuss a potentially deadly organic substance which is highly dangerous to Earth's people, SCP-1100, also known as Gaia's blood. This complex substance causes anomalous transformations in animal lives and natural plants. It spontaneously transmits through vaporization or else by direct contact through fertilizers, insects, and other excretion methods. Subjects infected with SCP-1100 takes approximately 24 hours to get fully transformed. After 72 hours, it becomes increasingly dangerous to human life. During the course of 24 hours, plants with fruits undergo exotic chemical transformations and become filled with explosive or caustic substances that burst violently. Plants with long tendrils and veins transform into muscle-like structures which are capable of grasping and crushing live human prey. Plants with thorns transform into needles, which causes serious body injury. Animals which are easy to handle become increasingly strong and aggressive Bruh. with no personal safety, where they can be harmful for humans. Animals that are household pets transform their size and strength, which can cause severe problems. Domesticated livestock animals also go through physiological changes, that make their flesh difficult to digest or even fatal when consumed by humans. SCP-1100 was first encountered in 1989 during the incident of the Exxon Valdez oil spill. It is considered as the worst oil spill worldwide which has caused a lot of damage to the environment. It contaminated the plants near the human settlement. It is still unknown how this substance is able to target humans. SCP Foundation is still investigating the source of it. The first experiment of the substance was held in Biocontainment Site 33. During the routine experiment, the substance transmitted a large amount of vapor and infected the entire plants. After a few hours, the site was fully destroyed and casualties among 70% were dead. Then after, the Containment Site 33 was removed. It was clear that the entire site was taken by SCP-1100. Not only the substance transformed the plants, but also it transformed the environment, including water supply. After this incident at Site-33, the remaining samples of SCP-1100 were moved to Biocontainment Site-26. The SCP Foundation recovered damaged surveillance video, where they determined that the containment site was entirely destroyed. The video evidence shows that a doctor was shot and disarmed by SCP-1100, which transformed the overall site into hell. He proceeded and removed the sample from Biocontainment Site 26 and reported immediately. All the experiments were performed only after the approval of Level 3 and must observe Level 4 guidelines. At Site 26, the precautions were less as compared to the site where the substance is now contained. Currently, SCP-1100 is contained at a classified site. A single sample of SCP-1100 is stored in a triple insulated container which is fully protected from outside environment. The container is stored in an enclosed chamber with military protection and with an area which is easy to evacuate. The container must be checked daily if it causes any change in substance. If necessary, the sample must be transferred to a new container to prevent any possible vaporization. All experiments regarding SCP-1100 have been halted for some time and will continue after further investigation. 
Well, this was the proof that SCP-1100 became extremely dangerous to contain, and its effects have increased since its initial containment in 1989. No conclusive source has yet been determined, nor is it known how the substance specifically targets humans. All experiments regarding SCP-1100 have been halted due to extreme danger. A diary was recovered from the doctor's house who was assigned to the BioSite-26. It was discovered that he got a chance to talk with the SCP Foundation again. They were agreeing that there's no other explanation that fits regarding SCP-1100. The Foundation tried hard to eliminate all the impossibilities. SCP-1100 is not a man-made substance, nor it's a biological weapon for taking revenge on civilization. It's a planetary immune response. It is Gaia, Mother Earth fighting back against us. The more we try to fight, the worse it gets. She wants us all dead, wants us gone because of what we have done to her, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. The only thing we can do is to take responsibility for our sins and accept our punishment. Well, this SCP demonstrates that population and technology have reached a point where Mother Nature will no longer tolerate human existence in silence. She has done so much for humans, and now it is their responsibility to look after her. Anyway, before it's too late, I need to address some urgent business. Sir, you need to see this. SCP Foundation notices that the abandoned Site-33 is on fire. They suspect something is wrong because there is no explanation behind this unexpected fire. This was done on purpose. Regardless of who you are, we'll track you down. 